there's a lot of talk around the need for a national information network and how do we really support that? I'm sitting here with Kate Berry, who is the CEO of the National eHealth Collaborative. Yep. And I'd like to know first what that is. Great. So the National eHealth Collaborative is a public-private partnership that is focused on addressing, uh, working uh, collaboratively with many stakeholders to address barriers to health information exchange and to accelerate progress to achieve widespread health information exchange. Are we moving in that direction naturally or is there still some resistance from private and public groups to support this kind of network? We're definitely moving in that direction, but it is a big challenge, both from a financial standpoint as well as workflow and technology. So the government as well as the private sector have invested dollars and, and have accelerated the progress toward more widespread health information exchange. But, you know, challenges still remain. What, kind, what are the biggest challenges? Well, you know, it's complex, and, and we have such a complex healthcare environment, and there are a lot of barriers related to simply how providers are paid for different services. So implementing technology is not necessarily part of how they get paid. It is a tool to enable improvements in quality and improvements in coordination of care. But barriers are things like just understanding how to move forward. Um, barriers and challenges relate to governance issues and to workflow issues issues and financial sustainability issues. There are quite a few um, challenges, but again, lots of progress is being made. How is the patient impacted by the slowness of getting some type of network up and running efficiently? Well, interesting, patients sort of assume that, that their medical information is actually electronic already. So I think the patients maybe aren't impacted as directly. However, I think, you know, when we have a fully automated electronic system, patients will certainly benefit because they won't have to repeat all of their information every time they go to a provider. Their information would be more widely accessible. And the coordination of their own care among their providers would happen in a more streamlined manner. Plus, they'd have tools available to them directly to help engage more directly in their care. So I think we all have a lot to gain, both consumers as well as providers, as well as um, the government and every stakeholder that's paying for and being impacted by healthcare delivery. So there's really a lot of things to do, really updating um, technologies that are in place now, training people, really putting in the manpower. That's right, exactly. I mean, I think it starts with education and helping everybody understand what are the options to move forward. And it's helping um, helping various stakeholders to address whatever barriers they encounter, whether it's um, selecting a technology, implementing a, a technology effectively, helping with workflow and change management and kind of pull it all the way through the other end so that we can all realize the benefits. But there are, you know, there are even the upfront cost issues. So, you know, I think a lot of those barriers are being addressed and it's going to be an ongoing effort to get um, the technology really implemented in a widespread manner. In terms of cost, how do you envision uh, who would pay for this? Yeah, I mean, I think the, the the purchasers, to a large extent, are bearing a lot of the burden. So whether, you know, the government is part of Medicare and Medicaid is a, one of the largest purchasers of health care. But certainly private payers are also um, doing incentives for providers to implement technology to kind of help make that happen. So I think the payers, both private and public, are playing a big role. Providers, obviously, are paying to um, purchase and implement electronic health records, so both hospitals and physicians. Uh, and then, you know, I think that in the cost of insurance, you know, we as individuals are bearing some of the costs. I think the cost is spreading across pretty much everyone that's impacted um, by the need for having that technology in place. Do you have some type of time frame in mind, Kate, on when this can be achieved? Well, as I've said, you know, there's a lot of progress that's happened, but there's still a long way to go. Let's say today we have roughly 30% of physicians have electronic health records in their, in, in their practice. We have um, more than 40 states that are implementing health information exchanges in part through public funding as well as private funding. So it's happening on a large scale. There are national federal players like the VA and DOD and others that have, are, are exchanging with each other and with health systems and health information exchanges at the state and federal and regional level. So, you know, I think it's clearly it's going to take some more time, you know, could be, you know, in the five to ten year range to really have it, you know, fully, fully integrated across the healthcare system. How can the patient be more uh, 
be more of an advocate for himself with this information uh, once he's filled out forms at his own physician's office should he make that uh, other physicians that he's working with aware of that information as That's well? That's a great question. We're actually just launching a big project, the National e Health Collaborative, to bring together many organizations to try to create an organized program around consumer engagement. You know, so early on, I think one factor is, you know, consumers naturally believe health information technology is a good thing because they've been through automation and financial and shopping and travel. So I think they recognize that it's a positive thing. But I think there are lots of tools available, whether it's personal health, Health records they can get engaged. The idea of being aware that they want to, might want to ask their doctor, do you use an electronic health record? I think it's really a part of getting engaged at that level, being informed about what's possible, and leveraging the tools available to us, to us as an individual. How can I use these things to help um, be more informed and be more engaged in my own care? All right, Kate, a long way to go. <laughs> Thank exactly. you very much. Thank you. I'm Abel John. You're watching coverage of the World Healthcare Congress in Washington, D.C.